Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great weekend. Uh, if you are uh, watching this thing on YouTube, right, please like, share, subscribe, uh, tell a friend. If you are watching this uh, via the Twitter uploading platform, right, please like, retweet, all that good stuff. Help the cause so we can help you out. Uh, as much as we can. So let's talk about the market. Uh, obviously, uh, we've been on this rock star run. Technology has been going uh, absolutely gangbusters. Uh, all the you know all the crowd favorites. You know you had Tesla and Nvidia and Apple and this that and the other thing. And the question is every single day: Is this going to be the day they slow down? Right? Is this going to be uh, the day that they finally start losing a little bit of gas? Uh, and start maybe getting a little bit heavy, and we 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 got that answer last week. Not only if you watched the you know if you watched uh, the weekend video, not only did we get it for one day last week, we got a whole extension for the whole week. And we came in today. Uh, we came in today. The question was, well, was the market going to uh, sell the news on the debt ceiling, or was it going to be kind of a moot point and kind of moving on with our day? It, nobody even mentioned it. it. It was kind of one of those odd things, like the debt ceiling came, it came, went. Uh, and, you know, end all be all and everything's forgotten. Uh, the question was today, can we continue the aggressive nature? And today was the first day um, I can really, really say the majority of the market kind of stopped and took a breath, right? If you look at a lot of charts, and you'll see kind of what I'm talking about. You know, Amazon, you know, Amazon was up a buck. But if you get if you look at the 60 minute view, it gapped up and kind of went sideways. Uh, you look at a name, for example, uh, like Microsoft, you know, kind of did the same thing, gapped a little bit, kind of drifted into the close. Uh, t Tesla continues to be uh, on its runaway train. Again, we've highlighted every level literally uh, on Tesla in the last two weeks. Uh, again, big, big move. But again, you could clearly see here it's starting to get a little tired, right? You look at Meta, for example, right? Meta, for example, did exactly the same thing it did a couple of weeks ago. When it got tired and started putting this roll about top here the next day it took out the five day moving average and got hit you could see that uh nvidia is doing exactly the same thing this is the first close uh below the five day moving average you can see amd doing exactly the same thing uh it held the 10 day moving average so it, the the point i'm trying to make going into tomorrow's session it's not that i'm bearish i'm not okay i'm not you you you, you can't use the word bearish uh, and euphoria just a day apart. You, you just can't do that. Um, I am more now uh, in the position of I'm watching really, really closely if you know stocks start looking uh, more heavy tomorrow, start putting in uh, lower highs uh, on the 60 minute, on the daily chart, taking out the previous day's high. Because if you look at an AMD and NVIDIA, phenomenal runs, absolutely phenomenal runs. But at certain points, gravity kicks in, you, and you could see the charts, right? You could see the charts, the similarities right here, right? Here's a similarity right over here, and it got tired, lost the previous day's range, the five-day, and got hit. This is kind of the same same thing here, right? Got tired, lost the five-day, attempted on, on the 10-day. If it loses the 10-day, it could get hit. Uh, NVIDIA, the same thing, right? NVIDIA is just hanging on to the five-day moving average. So, you know, we're, we're definitely seeing a lot of names starting to get tired does it mean the market's going to collapse no it doesn't mean the market's going to collapse uh does it mean again the market from time to time even the most bullish scenarios uh need the rest yeah why not right absolutely i think rest is good i think we've demonstrated uh enough times even the most surging market uh that when things get heavy and you start seeing lower highs with with uh with with clusters of uh diminishing volume and in intraday uh, start to play itself out, you you might get a, a day or two of rest. And this is kind of uh, the last example we saw that was, let's just forget about all this, right? So the last couple of times we saw this was, was a big, big euphoric run in the queues, kind of put an inverted hammer, lost the five day, and then, you know, went all the way to the 10 day moving average. So if you look at, uh, if you look at the market right now, from just demonstrating from the queues, 
we're starting to kind of get a little bit of the same thing. Again, it, it's not, there's nothing definite, there's nothing guaranteed, but I, I think you have to start paying attention more tomorrow and be a little bit more 50-50 in your approach going into tomorrow's session of, you know, hey, there is a shot that we start the back test. Again, you want to be prepared. Like I, I say this every single night on every single video, but again, when you start getting exhaustion themes, you know, playing out, you know, over and over and over again in, in different intervals. Again, the last one uh, we had was on May the 18th, right? So we're, you know, we're about, uh, you know, three weeks from, from the last one. So if we start seeing uh, more exhaustion signals, okay, I, I think start looking at the, a lot of names uh, that were defended off the five-day moving average, maybe defended off the 10-day moving average uh, for today's session, like, you know, like in NVIDIA, like an AMD, right? And you start looking at those names, but if they start losing the five-day moving average, if they start losing the 10-day moving average, again, just like last time, right? If you guys remember uh, last time, we had a really nice move on the video. If you guys remember, that was an inverted hammer, right? What happens when there's an inverted hammer? Well, this is what happens. It takes out the next day and it goes to the five-day. Well, now it's hovering on the five-day, and that's the whole point. I, I want to watch the video tomorrow. If the video starts losing this bottom channel here and confirms the five-day moving average hell why not and again just from the options market and this is kind of what we always try to talk from the option side institutional money flow there was a lot for all you guys who have uh option scanners and this this there's tons of them uh they're all you know they're all pretty comparable there's uh trade alerts and then there's uh cheddar flow and then there's Think black box stocks um i personally use flow algo i just like it again there's nothing better or worse one or the other they're all pretty pretty comparable uh we did notice a lot of weekly 280 puts i mean excuse me 380 puts 280 puts would be really really uh, aggressive uh we saw a lot of 380 puts coming in uh for size right we started some some coming in for size uh for the weekly 280 puts so again you know if this thing starts losing five the five day moving average you know do i think it's get to 280 uh, you know 380 i mean who the hell knows you know it all depends uh, how aggressive the move is but i think there still could be a trade there and that's at the end of the day that's what we're looking for you know nobody's looking for it in the video to go down to 330 you know we're just looking for a trade a dollar two dollars three dollars maybe we get it stretched out get four or five bucks depending on if, how the market goes so again we try to get rationalized on both sides same thing obviously with amd uh here's the 10 day moving average if it loses the 10 day you can see how close it is if it starts losing the 10 day moving average i think we can get the same result the one stock that we talked about over the weekend, um, I still have some overnight. Not the greatest close that I wanted, um, but again, it is what it is. I'm, you know, I have some cues as a hedge. Um, is Google, right? So we talked about Google. Um, we talked about Google on the video on the weekend, uh, getting above the range. Everything was going well. It really was. It had a really, really nice spike. Uh, it ran up about a buck. We took some off. Um, you know, it took some off, which is fine. Uh, it came back in. Uh, it came back in here. Uh, we, we again. The, the one thing we we noticed uh, on Friday and what we saw today: massive continuation of massive 129, 130, and 131 weeklies. Even when when the market was coming in a little bit, I mean, it was just a lot of size being being traded on those weekly 29, 30, and 31s. So who the hell knows? You know, I I want to give it uh, the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I do have uh, some cues as a hedge so in case we open up lower. You cover some cues and kind of you know play around with your position i want to see how it uh, holds up obviously uh today's low is gonna be a big big deal but i want to see how the stock reacts tomorrow uh if there is weakness in the nasdaq but but keep an eye on this thing I, again again the last time we saw really really aggressive call buying uh was tesla and then you know obviously you guys know uh what tesla did um you know going into tomorrow for the exception of like a nvidia or an amd to the downside a lot of stocks are kind of stuck in the middle of their channels. When you go through your uh, through your charts tonight, you'll you'll kind of see that. So there is a shot, right? There is a shot unless you know unless uh, unless we get some pretty good value on the video on AMD. Um, there could be a shot that the market does nothing tomorrow. Now, obviously, when I mean the market does nothing, you'll always find things to do, right? Uh, we'll get to the pivots in a second. Like you'll see, uh, you know, alternative stocks kind of waking up. Like you know, we discussed. Uh, IOT over the weekend. You guys remember that? We discussed IOT over the weekend. Like names like this, you could start waking up, which, which was a phenomenal, phenomenal move. Congratulations for all you guys who took it. But don't be surprised when you're doing your chart work today. You're going to run into some symbols and be like, 
huh, this looks good, but what about that? Uh, th that's in the middle of the range. Like, look at, for example, a Carl Icahn, right? Like the Carl Icahn trend. Usually, it wouldn't be a stock that I would look at. Uh, if you guys remember, Hindenburg uh, did a research piece, that obviously a hit job, and the stock got crushed. Uh, put it in his bottom. It's kind of grinding here in between the five and the ten day. I'm not saying this is something that I'm going to trade, depending on how you know how slow or or, or aggressive the date tomorrow is. Because again, at the end of the day, I trade technology, you know, mega cap technology names. But keep an eye on this thing. It's been rejected now twice off the ten day moving average. You know, I'll watch it tomorrow just in case. But who knows? Maybe there'll be some option flow. But if this thing can get above the 10-day moving average, who knows? Maybe this thing could give a, a dead cap bounce. You know, something, again, when, when the rest of the market is a little bit um, asleep or potentially uh, going to be asleep, I, I, I try to always find alternative ways to kind of put stakes into the freezer. Uh, look at a name like Cargill, right? Uh, Cargill, uh, they came out with nice earnings. Uh, it broke out today, uh, put in you know, put in a high, got reject, rejected off the Bollinger Band. Again, alternative stocks, right? Not usually names that I would trade, but again, you know, beggars can't be choosers sometimes. So if your stocks rest, you have a choice. Either you rest or start looking at other things, but keep an eye on this thing. If it could get above uh, the Bollinger Band, this thing could wake up as well. Uh, Uber, Uber's not a bad looking chart at all, right? Uber attempted to break out today. Uh, it kind of got stuffed with the reversal of Apple. We'll get to Apple in a second. It got rejected and kind of went lower. So speaking of Apple, right? So Apple had its uh, WW blah, blah, blah. Who the hell knows what, what kind of conference it is. And the CEO made a, a cardinal mistake of saying, this is going to be the most exciting announcement, the most important announcements in our, uh, since in our history of this event. Man, I'm thinking the eye toilet, George Costanza is going to be, is going to be finally you know, uh, is we finally put in a situation that he's regarded as the inventor of the eye toilet. Here comes the eye toilet. They didn't come out with the eye toilet. They came out with some virtual reality, you know, schmata that you put on your face, like 3,500 bucks. Bro, I don't know what the hell this thing is. I don't know what it does, but I want it in velour and a size 11. If you can get that for me, that'd be great. So they ran up Apple, and then once they realized it was a virtual reality headset for 3,500, yeah, you can see the reaction. Ain't nobody spending 3500 at least no grown-ass adult that I know. So uh, Apple got sold off, obviously took down a lot of these stocks with it. But again, word to wise, uh, word to wise of anybody in any industry, okay? People love, like, I love the word, you know, over-deliver over and under-promise. Apple did the absolute opposite today. They they over-promised and under-delivered for, for a virtual reality headset. Wonderful. Sounds like a wonderful idea. However, Unity Software had a monster, monster move because they were kind of involved with this whole uh, virtual reality. But you can see kind of going into tomorrow's day, you're going to run into a lot of charts that are, are starting to get tired, are tired, but more important, they're in the middle of the ranges. And when that happens, right, we start looking to the downside of the market to see if we can catch uh, some value. Again, I gave you guys a couple of ideas to watch. Watch AMD. Uh, and watching the video tomorrow, potentially below uh, their five and 10 day moving averages, respectively. So let's talk about today. Uh, let's talk about today. So here is, you know, again, here is Google. So I bought Google, went up a buck, right? Went up a buck and, you know, it's, you know, you know basically down about the 20 cents from where I bought it, you know, whatever. I have some, let's see how it plays out here. Uh, IOT, again, had a big Friday on earnings for experienced traders and never got the dip to 2360, 2380, but it did confirm uh, 2505, and this thing just absolutely uh, went bananas, right? It took out to five, the 2505 and went as almost as high as 27 and a half. Just an absolute tremendous move there. Congratulations to all you guys who caught it. Uh, Square, I wasn't watching it. 64 needs to build. I have no, honestly, I have no idea what Square did today. Uh, 64, it looks like it stopped at 64. It never, it never broke through. So again, 64 continues to be the big number on Square. I don't know why I actually scalped. One of those names I usually don't trade. I actually scalped the 2170 uh, needs to build. Here was NNOX. I believe we covered NNOX uh, on the weekend update. Again, not a big move, but 2170 went to uh, 2270 and then it really reversed. But again, nice little scalp, man. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Roku, 61 needs to build. I, I saw it up like 50 cents. I didn't trade Roku. Uh, I saw it up like it took out 61. Yeah, it went up to 61, 67. Uh, this is still continues to be the grind from the 50-day moving average. Uh, Netflix, nice little move on Netflix. 408 needs to build. 
uh, Netflix, uh, nice move, nice move on Netflix. It traded all the way up to uh, 414 from the 408, so nice move uh, there as well. And I believe that is it. Yeah, so again, here is the area. It is, it's a different pivot for, uh, this is going to be a different pivot for tomorrow, but uh, 8850, 88, went down to 87. Uh, again, you know, size buyers came in for the 280 weeklies, and that's the most important part. If we start seeing uh, the market gap up tomorrow and start, NVIDIA and AMD start going lower, keep an eye on that bottom of the range because if they start coming back in for those uh, 280 weeklies, especially with size, there's a chance that the price action will follow. Guys, God bless, stay blessed, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.